Well, joining me to debate this is football journalist Mina Rizuki, the president of the Norwegian Football Association, Lies Clavenus, Spanish football journalist and author, Guillaume Belegi, and senior fellow at the Manhattan Institute and author, Heather McDonald. So we've got a great panel for this, and it is complicated. Now, Mina, I can see you slightly rolling your eyes at some of the things I was saying there. Um, what's your view of this? I am outraged. So I am one of those people that... I'm sorry, but I do agree with the way that The Guardian has put this. I don't think this is... What has been portrayed in this interview is that this is an isolated incident. This poor man went on stage and he kissed a girl out of celebration and now we're debating whether or not it's... Well, no-one called, no called him a poor man. I didn't express any sympathy for what he'd done. I said what he did was wrong, as did he. The question becomes, was what we witnessed literally in one of the most watched events in the world, the World Cup final podium, as they're all going to know, was that a crime? You have to apply context, because everything in this isolation is regarded... We, we are now debating what happened as an isolated incident. But what we need to know is the man. We need to understand the full context of the but situation. But that, that won't be relevant to any court case. The court case will be about whether what he did constitutes sexual assault. There won't be the context of what may have gone on with disputes over pay and stuff with the Spanish women's team. It will purely be about the kiss. So we're debating only whether or not this is a criminal case. That, so your well, boss... no, no, I, I think so, because I think that he's lost his job, so you can say that could take in all the other stuff. All right, maybe he shouldn't be president, um, and that's a perfectly legitimate argument. I just don't think what we witnessed constitutes any kind of crime, and I'm not sure that most people feel that. But you, do you? Yes, I do. Really? I, I feel that if my boss comes in and decides to celebrate with me by, by kissing me, and cultural conformity, and as women have learned to do on most occasion, is taken on the chin or not perhaps make a, a big deal out of it, perhaps, you know, slap him on the podium there and then, uh, go in and, you know, everyone's just won the World Cup. You have to just celebrate with everyone, but you, in your heart of hearts, understand that something's gone wrong, but you cannot or have the emotional capacity to process this. But he is still your boss who has launched himself on you and then gone downstairs to the dressing room to then tell everyone that he wants to marry you and they're all invited to this. I think that that would put me in a very vulnerable state. And if I was to process that emotion, what, what exactly are my, my options over mm. here? How is this man allowed to do this? And then at the end of the day, I am being questioned. They are threatening me with legal action. They are calling me a liar when he has done this action in front of everyone and has shown time and time again that he has uh, very uh, okay. disregard and for I don't, women. I think you make some very good points, uh, particularly about the way they tried to demonise. I thought it was completely wrong. Um, they should never have done that. How do you explain the radio interview she gave, dismissing it all as nothing, the fact that on the team bus they're all laughing and joking, the fact that in the dressing room, actually, when they were offered the trip to Ibiza, and he's obviously joking about the marrying thing, um, but that, again, the atmosphere appears to be very light and jocular. So I've been in, in certain positions before as somebody who works in, in men's football, especially, in, in which you walk into a situation and they joke with you, but it's all jokes. And there was no seat available for our production meeting. And they will say, come sit on my lap. What is exactly my options to respond to this? I either laugh and joke and play it off because that is my instinct to survive or to culturally conform to society ideals, uh, or I make a big deal of it and then I put my, my job on the line. And these are the decisions that we're faced with every day. Yeah, I understand that. So everyone yeah. keeps talking about whether or not, or her reaction. So if I was to abuse a little boy every day, but he doesn't you know, go to the police or he doesn't show himself to be trauma-induced uh, or sitting in a corner, then it's OK. I can continue to abuse this mm. little boy. It's not about how she has reacted okay. to, to the situation. It is about what he's done. And we don't talk about enough about what he's done as being the problem. Mm. And if we don't stop this now, what is the next step? If well, thing, look, life, he has lost a very high-profile, powerful job as a consequence of it. So the consequences are clear. I think my, my point would be, it's bringing Professor MacDonald here, my point, uh, Professor, is, is about whether this is proportionate now to take this to a courtroom. Do you think it is? Well, I would say this, Piers, that if women are so fragile and so vulnerable that a spontaneous split-second kiss in the context of mass elation, almost mass hysteria, can traumatize women at that, to that degree. I don't want them serving in combat units. Which is it? Are women strong and capable of, of fighting wars? Or are they so 
fragile that a spontaneous act that is not, never to be repeated can send them into a state of, of complete breakdown. As Mina said, context is all. This happened in the context of group mass elation. Clearly, he did not walk up to her, you know, grimacing to the camera, tattooed. She is not a, a fragile woman. She said herself in her initial statement, this was an absolutely accurate uh, portrayal of this event. It was a mutual gesture, totally spontaneous, prompted by joy. Feminists have become martinets. They have no tolerance for, for, for ambiguity, for human foibles. This is a travesty that he is being c criminally prosecuted for something that had no lingering effects. I can guarantee you Hermoso does not fear that she is going to be stalked by Luis Rubiales. Let's bring in a game below you. Now, you are the token man on this panel, game, so uh, a lot rests on your next few words. Uh, I've read your tweets on this. I know you've been quite scathing about Rubiales. You think it's right that he stepped down. Uh, what do you feel about the wider context of this as it now heads towards a courtroom? Do you think we've lost a sense of proportion or do you think that actually he should be held accountable criminally, potentially, for what happened? In fact, you lose a sense of proportion when all you talk about is the case and Rubiales. This is part of a wider context. Uh, my question to Rubiales would be, how can you think that what you've done was right and that you needed a whole wave of social protest for you to actually change your mind? And I must say, the apologies that he did to you were much more sincere than the ones that he did the day after. And for me, if Me Too was about pointing out criminal uh, behaviour of men towards women, in, in this case, the se acabo, the enough is enough uh, hashtag that Alex Yaputey has put in first, it's about let's stop things that have been normalised, like a boss, and Piers, you said the context is not important in a court case, in this court case, it's very important, because it's a boss doing it to an employee. Oh, no, 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 sorry, just to clarify that... That again. is so important. Yeah, to clarify that, I think that's absolutely important. The power imbalance, I think, is important. What I meant was the, the, the history of the kind of arguments that have been going on between the Spanish Football Federation and the women's team, which led to so many of the women not playing in the World Cup and so on, about pay, equal rights and so on. I don't think any of that is going to be relevant in the courtroom. The courtroom will simply be studying this kiss to see whether it constitutes a sexual assault. And he was very firm in the interview, repeatedly, that he believes that the full evidence, when it's laid bare, will support his view that he asked permission first. Now, if that is true, if he's able to establish that, does that change the narrative? If he establishes that, we may change the, the narrative and let's see what the court case and the judge uh, decides eventually in, in, in the High Court, because... Legally, uh, cases similar like that have come out with a yes, he's guilty, and no, he's guilty. So we cannot get into the legality of it. And that's why, by the way, he did not deal with Jenny Hermoso, apologising to Jenny Hermoso. He would have put him in a weaker position to the meeting that he's going to have Friday, right. the court case that comes forward. But I go back to this idea. In which world does he live in where he thinks that this is fine? I'll tell you the world he lives in. A world in which the Assembly, the General Assembly of the Federation, with 43 members, only seven are women, a world in which, and these are decision makers in the Federation, a world in which the heads of the local federations of Spain that also choose the next president, they're all men. That's the world he lives in. And these are people that he's chosen, that he pays directly or indirectly for them to say yes to him. That's the world that he lives in. Mm. And I think he's in shock that the majority of Spanish people almost unanimously are saying, enough, that's... Definitely not on. I think he, I, I do think he was in shock. I think he was in shock in the immediate aftermath, hence his kind of attack on his critics. Then the penny began to drop that he'd done something which most people found completely unacceptable. I have to say, to his credit, he didn't try and hide the fact that he he realised now what he'd done was completely wrong. I think the, the only debate left is whether it should now move to a criminal court. Let me bring in Lisa Clavin, who's been listening very patiently, president of the Norwegian Football Association. So you hold this job in Norway. What have you made of the, of the whole scandal? Of course, I've paid much attention. I was there in the final. Uh, Luis Rubiales is a colleague of mine. I know, I known him from before, not not personally, but met him several times in, during my campaign uh, when I ran for the UEFA Exco as the first woman in, woman in history to run for an open position. And, and 
I met him as a friendly and respectful colleague. So, so it's a difficult case to, to uh, comment on an individual basis because now it's a criminal case and that's not relevant to me. So the context I see it in is in, in the football context. Jenny Hermoso, to me, is a great football player. She's a world champion. Uh, she's, of course, the robust player. Uh, she's a great passer, a great finisher. So that's the context that is overshadowed. Uh, and that is, that is also the context we have to see it in. And I feel responsible to, to bring in that context because it's also societal important that we do it because it's the biggest sport in the world for for girls and women and it's been systematically uh, unbalanced uh, for for 50 to 100 years and now we see this frustration uh, piling up and of course for rubiales it's a what he called it mediatic tsunami mm. of course it's it, to him and to jenny hermoso this is now we're going to follow them and see how do they act of course they're both in under tremendous pressure but what he has to realize, and I think he will realize, every person can make mistakes. But the context here was also that the federation was in in a, in a fight or in a uh, in a battle with with the female players for years and years. So that is also a context uh, that is very relevant also to the whole uh, society, uh, and that we really need change. We really need change. I think the the real shame of this actually is that it totally eclipsed the magnificent achievement, not just of the Spanish team winning, but actually the event itself being such a dramatic success with huge sellout stadiums, massive TV ratings. This was the real coming of age, I think, of, the, of women's football as a global sport and a massive success. And rather than talking about that and all the positives, we spent three and a half weeks talking about a bloke kissing the winning captain, which yes. seems to me completely wrong. I, unfortunately, we've run out of time. I'm really sorry, but thank you very much to an excellent panel. A lot of range of opinions here. You know, for what it's worth, as I said at the start of all this, I don't think he should be heading to a courtroom. I think the punishment enough of losing his powerful job as president and being humiliated globally, which he has been for the last three and a half weeks, should probably suffice. But we will see. Thank you very much indeed.